Hi, I'm Oli. I'm Alex. I'm Dia. And I'm Serena. And we're here with the Santa Barbara Middle School Team Press, here with... Uh, Ken Robinson. We have a blank check for you to start the learning place of your dreams. But before we sign it, we wanted to ask you some questions about what you would do there. And it's not signed. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Okay. That's great. <laughs> what would your learning place be called? Um, uh, let me think. I wouldn't name it after me. <laughs> I think so. Some people have said that. Um, I, I'd, I'd probably call it the Explore Academy or something like that. Because I think education is about that. It should be about exploring ideas and uh, not just ideas about the world, but ideas about yourself and about uh, who you are and who are the people around you. So maybe that, maybe the Explore Academy. Who would be welcome? Um, uh, I would have in the school, apart from the students, uh, about, I'd have students of all ages at my ideal learning academy, I think. It would, wouldn't just be open to uh, uh, young people, I'd want intergenerational learning, I'd want people to come in of different ages who thought they could benefit from it. And on all sorts of teachers, I'd like to see artists at the school, uh, scientists, business leaders, because I think a really great school would be a mix of all the elements you'd find in a good community. What time would it start and end? Um, well, it would start late in the morning because I don't like mornings, you know, if, uh, if it was up to me. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think schools should be open uh, all day and all evening. I mean, you have to close place from time to time to get, to get it all cleaned and things like that. But uh, a lot of schools are based around fixed times. Uh, for no good reason and a lot of the facilities aren't being used when they could be so i i think great schools automatically uh morph in the evenings into other sorts of activities and one of the things i don't like you know is the fact that i mean they're, they're great i mean i'm a big supporter of after school programs but one of the problems with after school programs is that they're having to make up for all the things that are being cut out of the school day and a lot of things that go on after school actually should be happening during the school. That, you know, so a lot of arts programs happen after school. And it suggests really that these things aren't as important as what happens during the day. So I, I think schools should be you know, open from early in the morning till late at night, ideally. And would it be every day? Yes. Um, uh, perhaps not on Sundays. <clears throat> Uh, that's just a personal preference. I think people should have a day off, <laughs> and, or perhaps it's open for something else. But uh, I th yeah, I think there's there's no reason why schools shouldn't be very flexible like that. I mean, in principle, that they shouldn't run into Saturday and uh, and perhaps even change purpose. I mean, I know there's a school that uh, I was involved in a while ago. It's actually in England as it happens, but on a Friday they throw the whole timetable out and they turn it over to uh, classes that the students teach. You know, because students have all kinds of ideas and interests that uh, they don't get called on to express during the ordinary day. And a lot of teachers have all sorts of things they're interested in that they're not paid to teach ordinarily. You know, you might be paid to teach math, but you might be really interested in music and or poetry or something, or vice versa. Um, so they throw the whole thing over, but there's no reason why those things shouldn't also run into the weekend. What classes would you have there? What class? Well, I would have a balance. I, I don't know if I could name, uh, I, I'd want to work with the people in the school to come up with names for classes, but I'll tell you the things I'd want to include. I think a, a school should obviously give equal weight, I think, to uh, art and music and dance and uh, uh, theatre, uh, to literature, and they should be seen as being as important as uh, sciences and uh, maths and uh, language teaching and physical education and what we think of as the humanities. Um, and I put those broad categories because uh, you know, the, I think it's very important in a creative and a dynamic school that people aren't locked in to certain subjects and there shouldn't be a hierarchy. I mean I think science is really important and so is maths. But they're not more important than dance or music. And it always amazes me when people say that they are. And I think, well, why would they be? Because uh, if w when people are moving properly and practicing dance and the disciplines of dance, they're learning all kinds of important things about themselves and about the world around them and culturally. So I'd have that spread. It, I'd give an equal weight to the arts, humanities, physical education, math, science, um, and uh, I say the humanities and languages.
<laughs> um, would all of... When do you sign this check? Right? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Time to sign it. At the end. <laughs> um, so would all of these classes that you mentioned be mandatory? Uh, for a while. For a while. I think that in the early years of education, um, it's important that uh, students try many different things. Some things you need to learn about anyway. I mean, it's it's important to, to obviously to learn to read and write, to be literate. I think it's important to have a basic understanding of mathematics. I think it's just as important that you learn about uh, playing an instrument and learn about you know, what your body's capable of in terms of dance and movement. So I'd make them all compulsory yet to start with. Um, but there comes a point in most people's lives where they start to develop preferences or preferences come to the surface where there's something that you want to spend more time on maths you know they, they've really got into it you know they they really enjoy pushing themselves and that boundary some people by then have decided it's not really for them but they're really into maybe design or technology or or they're into music or they want to spend more time you know working with people and one of the big faults I think in the current system of education is everybody has to do everything all the time and I think if we know anything about people it's that we're all different and we start to develop preferences and uh, we're drawn towards different things so I think by the time people get to be sort of 12, 13, 14 then we, could sh we should be seeing some uh, choice and selection and spend more time on things that you really feel drawn to. How would you do recess? Why do we need recess? I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, how would I do it? Uh, well, how long would it be and what kind of options would the kids be? What do you mean would like the recess kids? during the day? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, I don't really think you need it. Um, I mean, re recess is one of those things, if I'm understanding it properly, we used to call it playtime when I was at school. Uh, but it's one of those things that uh, you kind of stop the world for a while so people just go and kind of dash around and, and relax. Um, and it, it, if, if you're running a, a school where everybody is on the same sort of time frame and track, then you think, well, we'll all have recess at the same time. But if you run a school that's flexible um, and uh, where there's choice for activities, then people can take a break when they need it and choose when they need to have a recess. And there's no reason why we should all do it all at the same time, like for the same amount of time. You see, some activities that you want to spend a lot of time on. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're working on a project, if you say you're working on a design project or a technology project, you may want to spend all day in it. Uh, some other things, you might just want to spend half an hour or 20 minutes. You know, you might want to go and talk French to somebody for a bit or, you know, or work at the library for a bit. Um, so once you get out of school, I mean, when you get out of high school and elementary school, for example, if you come to a place like this, University of Santa Barbara or to a college, uh, or uh, if you go to um, you know, veterinary college or if you go to uh, a dance academy, they don't have recess. They just have stuff and, and you, you organize your own day and you pick the course you take and you have a break when, when you have a break. So I, I wouldn't bother with a recess like that. I mean, you, people need time, need downtime, but they can decide, I think, for themselves when they have it.